recording. Okay, I want to uh, bring you all back here. We have got uh, Dr. Ray Teft is going to be uh, giving you a lot of great information about health. So let's start off with uh, bring a big chair here. What a beautiful day. It's, uh, it's, uh, it couldn't be better. And thank you everybody for coming. And it, it, Dan's a sensational guy. I've got nothing but kudos for him since we met. He says, you know, I'm making it on the financial side. I'd like to improve my health. That's how this whole thing got started. So here we are. So uh, I guess we'll get everybody ready to go. And uh, am I standing in the way? I yeah, you're perfect. You're perfect. I would say I'm perfect. <laughs> anyway, lights, camera, action. No, just kidding. Okay, uh, our company is called First Life Nutrition Consultants. We started in 2001. It's an extension of all the doctor's offices that I used to have in the old days. And we do all the things for you in the comfort of your own home that the doctor should be doing. About 95% of what's going on with your health is not uh, measured or addressed by conventional medicine. So we specialize in this. We've been in, what, 18 countries? Uh, I used to uh, work with uh, Malibu Health and Rehab. Lindy's my partner back there, and, and you saw our third partner. Oh, and then we also have Starbucks. Where's Starbucks? Are you kidding? Back there. There he is. <laughs> he's, he's what keeps us going. So um, we're here to really show you how to supercharge your health. And unfortunately, with the way healthcare is going, it's breaking the budget, it's destroying us. And you know, the doctors are sitting there telling you, well, you know, your blood test is okay, but they, you don't realize that's just tip of the iceberg. There's so much more. We're over medicated. People don't realize that the bottom line is you are not what you eat. Your body just doesn't automatically take what it needs from whatever you're eating, good or bad or whatever, and drop the rest. Everybody, it's about what your body retains, how well you digest, absorb, utilize, and eliminate. And let me tell you something. Before we even get going, UCLA put this to the test in the Arizona Biosphere 1 and 2. And they said if we all used these, well, this technology, this nutrient management technology I'm going to tell you about in a second, we all use this. We live to be 166 years old. That is for true. Sure. That's what they said. 166 years old. They accused the medical community of shortchanging us by almost by more than half, right? Just about more than half. Greg, Greg, up the ante for me because I kept saying I'm going to live to 130. Now it's going to be 160. What are all your ears going to say though? <laughs> Damn, what are you going to leave us? <laughs> Not you, but it is. <laughs> so, so uh, and you know, we'll get into more of the details, but uh, I wanted to start by telling you that Fox News investigated us. Oh, this is too good to be true. This guy's full of you know what. So uh, they looked at us, they sent in a journalist who happens to be a lawyer to try what we did offline. And I'm gonna push a button and I'll show you what happened. I think you'll enjoy this. So let's okay, hope it works. So let's do that. Uh, Hit it first. Here. Okay. Yeah, we'll go forward. Forward. And there we go. And then, okay. we'll come up here. And it's about four minutes. That That's the person right there <laughs> that investigated us. Wow. Oh, no sound. <laughs> we had it. Can you back it up? Yep, yeah, let's try it. We'll back it up. I'm, I'm proud of this. Yeah. We've been on TV, but Fox is the most pragmatic. They took a look at us. Live from the Fox Television Center in Los Angeles, this is the Fox Television News. Just like everything, it only starts with the rich and famous. People who have the resources. Want the best. It's the secret the stars uncovered years ago. One size does not fit all when it comes to dieting. We have to go in and find out exactly what's in there right now and work with it. And we can find out exactly where your biological potential is. Dr. Gregory Taft has spent years helping actors and athletes build those perfect bodies. The basis of his diet plan, all bodies are different, so all diets should be too. He uses results by customizing each patient's eating plan to work with their body chemistry. We're able to come up with a completely customized medical lab proven nutrition program. Diets like Dr. Tefts were once too expensive for the average person, but not anymore. Recent advances in the lab have put the cost of a customized diet within the reach of most people. I actually recently had a baby and I met 
10 pounds better than I was before I got pregnant. New mom, Jody Tomaszewski, swears by the diet. She ordered her testing kit after deciding it was time to lose that baby weight. I had to send a hair sample. I had to send, I had to take my pH balance, I think you call it, for a, a few consecutive days. Here's how the diet works. Patients use the kit to measure their pH level for three consecutive days. They send in the results, a hair sample, and a questionnaire detailing their body type and medical history. A few weeks later, you get a detailed report in the mail. Basically, what my report said was that um, my calcium was too high, my potassium was too low, my magnesium was too low. Remember that periodic chart of the elements from high school? Well, patients get a detailed analysis showing how much of each of those elements are present in their system. Dr. Teft uses those results to create a specific eating plan designed just for you. We treat your body like an experiment, and we apply what they call the law of opposites. We simply give your body more of what you have less of, and less of what you have more of until it meets in the middle. The goal is to speed up metabolism by balancing the elements in your body. Instead of a multivitamin, Dr. Teft prescribes a list of supplements each patient should take. Jody takes 31 pills a day. I take 11 in the morning, 10 after lunch, and 10 after dinner. Each patient gets a list of foods to add to their diet and a list of foods to avoid. Some of the food on my list were things like potato chips, um, corn chips, things like that, which was no surprise to me. Other things were things that, you know, I, I would have never known. Jody was really surprised by her avoid list. Mushrooms, blueberries, even broccoli, Dr. Taft also told her to avoid white bread and to balance her meals with 40% carbs, 40% protein, and 20% fats. I would say I went from a size 6 down to a size 2 using this diet. And I've never had results like that in the past that have been so easy. Suzanne Stratford, Fox News. Yes, they liked it, huh? <laughs> And by the way, she didn't have to take all these. She's in the beginning to get the show on the road to really turn her metabolism around. She took more pills. Actually, the goal is to get you on as few vitamin pills as possible. That that's not the way it works in this country, right? It's the other way around. Get you on more pills, more drugs. No, no, no. And you'll learn more about this as we go. If you're really getting better, it takes less to keep you there. Trust me. The more they sell, the more they are. Hey, hey, you got one of my slides. Okay, let's try this point. So what's ailing you? <clears throat> Overweight? I mean, there's something for everybody here. Poor digestion, low energy, any of these things. I mean, there's a lot more. What's really ailing you? And, um, you know, I mean, sure, everybody can identify with something here. I guess in our country, just real quickly, uh, diabetes. I think uh, we're now number one in the world for type 2 diabetes. And, uh, of course, we have the obesity problem. That's just tip of the iceberg. But, there's actually more diet-related disease on the books than ever before. So it, it's a problem. And most people really, well, we'll get into the, the specifics of why they're doing what they're doing and why it's not working. And certainly what you said before is absolutely true. The system's canted against you because the sicker you are, the more money everybody else makes. The more you have to pay people to do things, the more money they make. The less you know what you're doing, the more money everybody else is going to make. And when you really fall down, hey, guess what? They got you. They got you, you know? Okay. So, okay, so uh, of course, here's the answer to things, right? Let's get everybody drugged up. Okay, now it's gotten to the point in this country, and we take uh, what was it, I, the last statistic, I looked up statistics before I, did, before I came in here just to double check. 98 point something percent of the drugs, you know, uh, prescription drugs in the world are being taken by us. We have commercials every second. And now, look at this. The number one cause of premature preventable death, this is National Institute of Health, is from the side effect complications from prescription medication compounding over time. Okay? So, drugs aren't the answer. They don't get to the cause. I keep on saying that. Okay. Here you go. I, I chose this cartoon for us today. <laughs> Can you all read that? <laughs> Doctor, patient. The, uh, the doctor saying the problem is you're over medicated. Luckily, there are drugs that can help with that. <laughs> right? What is it? Uh, uh, it's almost going on a third of the economy is based on, on drug technology, medical, you know, healthcare costs, that kind of thing. I mean, that, that's a heck of a lot. That's more than any other country in the world. Most countries I looked at were like eight, ten percent. You know, I mean, the country's more like us. Sometimes can be a little higher. 
So, uh, let's see what we got. Okay, so what's holding us back from being our best? I mean, okay, aside from <laughs> money, uh, there's money and sickness. Not so much in wellness. If everybody was well, what would happen to all the drug companies and all the vitamin manufacturers? We try to throw stuff at you and all these fad diets and things and all these other gadgets out there, all this technology that you're being told is so good for you. Well, economists would say exactly what you said. This gentleman, I, I remember him because his name is my name, Greg. So, <laughs> but it's true. The economists would say it's what's holding us back from being our best, the fact that uh, Everybody makes money off of our sickness. It's that simple. The whole system here is based on that. Not preserving wellness or promoting it or getting it started from the beginning. Now the MDs say, okay, what's holding us back? Lazy patients. You guys are all lazy. Because we tell you what to do. You don't eat from the four food groups and take your multiple vitamin A. You know. Well, there's another side to that too. The now medical doctors that know about what I'm going to talk about would tell you that, uh, and I'll quote Jim Brawley, uh, he wrote the Food Nutritionology Revolution, and then Dr. Abraham Hoffer, kind of the godfather of medicine. Starting with Jim, he said about 87% of what's really going on in your body, physicians miss altogether. The test that they're taught in school, and the measurements, and the things they do on your body to try to diagnose you, are just the tip of the iceberg. And more aimed at a crisis, when you already know something's wrong, after the fact, more or less. And then also, a lot of those same measurements are relegated to taking a drug or not, or, you know, or two, or three, uh, or so on. So, the MDs, it's, it's uh, you know, they have, they're blaming it on us. I don't know if you saw Dr. Ozzy mentioned the Cornell Report. That was in my book. I have uh, written a couple books, and Lindy and I wrote a third book, which we'll tell you about. But um, Dr. Oz uh, basically read this book, and in that, the Cornell Report, it found that actually the patients weren't really the lazy ones. The doctors were, they didn't want to learn how to do all the stuff that I'm going to talk to you about. And it was, it was not just, they didn't think it was that important, because, yeah, we, in my office, I, I need to get you out the, the front door here. You're in a crisis. I don't want you. Okay. They weren't thinking in the long term, but it also cost more money and took more time. And uh, actually, the patients, you know, would do more of what the doctor said if they just lead the way. So the Cornell report, although he cited the fact that, you know, lazy patients, they don't want to change. And it's true, too. We've gotten used to not changing it fast enough. Psychologists would call it uh, status and bias confirmation. Uh, psychologists would say, hey, you know, uh, status, people like things the way they are, they don't want to change. Change is difficult. Bias means, well, you just take it from the market or what the doctor says, what you really want to believe is true and you pick that out of context. Okay, so now, naturopaths, I'm a board certified naturopathic physician, would say, hey, it's because we're getting away from the cause of disease. And since all diseases are diet related and the solution to illness can be found in nutrition, which I'll show you, is what the government said, uh, we're making a big mistake. So, just to go back to the drugs for a second, uh, it's slightly more than this now, but 150,000 people die a year in our country, sad, just from drugs because the lethal dose of a drug versus the effective dose is very close. It's hard to overdose on a vitamin compared to a drug. So, even when it's used properly, but it can save our lives, so we can't devalue drugs altogether. Okay? Just don't get me you know, wrong, I mean, there's a place for certain drugs, trust me, but we kind of get carried away. And uh, like I said before, um, the, the, um, the, uh, the number one cause of pre preventable, uh, premature preventable death is from the side effect complications correctly prescribed uh, uh, drugs, I should say, not nutrition. And I actually went to Washington with the Psych Truth doctors, you can look this up. And uh, we started, uh, we actually, a few doctors that were actually advisors to the White House. I worked with Dr. Ricky O'Simon and Dr. Bregan, psychologists and psychiatrists. And we got together in Washington to start the Say No KNOW to prescription drug campaign. They felt that all the, about half the meds out there shouldn't be on the market. They're too dangerous. So we tried to get people to download this, and it's on the website. This agreement between themselves and their doctor, about 20 million were downloaded, I believe, but not one doctor would sign it because it made them responsible for whatever happened to whatever the drugs did that wasn't good for you. They didn't like that. So, oh, I should be pointing you over there. Okay, so, uh, why, why are we carried around and why are we getting sick? Why, why are we using drugs? Well, we know that the reason for using drugs is quick fix. But it just so happens when comparing nutrition tests from around the world and statistics, we are just blowing this down. We have more nutrition 
opportunities, more supplements, uh, we can get organic foods, we can get a lot of things better than any other country. It's, it's at our fingertips. Yes, still, nine out of ten people in uh, this country still don't eat the right foods and they're depending on drugs. So even though we have all these great resources out there, we have health food stores, we have you know, Whole Foods, all these places, uh, still most people aren't doing it right. And it's not just about the quality of the food, it's about the, the specificity, what you eat. Because you just are not made to eat everything. Just like an Eskimo can't become a vegetarian, or an East Indian Hindu vegetarian can't eat all whale bulgur and get by. It, it'll destroy. It'll <laughs> take years off your life. <laughs> so, and now, addiction to drugs is the fastest growing problem in the U.S. We're getting so addicted to this stuff, right? Yet, the real problem, 9 out of 10 people aren't even, they don't know how to eat right. And it's not their fault. They're, you know, they're eating from this food pyramid. Maybe they think that's the answer. So with conventional medicine, they're holding us into this pattern, quick fixes, one size fits all thinking. Now that's also the problem with diet. You know, what's good for me is good for you is actually a tribal mentality that's been displaced. Now there are cultures around the world, I'll mention them here, where incredibly they live to be overnight. I've got an average of 95 years life expectancy. They don't take any drugs. And they're very similar genetically. They live in the same place, the environment's the same, the way of life's the same. That's really the secret. We're all mixed up here. We've lost traditions. There's a lot of things going on. But the quick fix is, again, hey, here's something for you quick. He'll get you out the door. Not really thinking about the, the total ramifications. We're focusing not only on one size fits all, but symptom relief too much. Oh, I got a headache. Well, there's, I don't know, I counted them over 200 reasons you could have a headache. Maybe just dehydrate. Maybe you don't have too much sugar. I mean, come on. Maybe it's from those drugs you're taking, <laughs> mixing up. You know? So. Uh, I had a person with frontal headaches uh, for years, and they were taking um, strong, you know, meds for it. I mean, you know, uh, stuff you don't, you'd have to, oh, you know, uh, stuff you treat a migraine headache with. And I said, well, let me test you. Maybe there's something there that's causing a headache that'll show right up. Hey, mercury, frontal headaches, bingo, they were full of mercury. Clean the mercury out, never had a headache again. Then they had to deal with getting off the meds. And they had trouble sleeping, I don't want to go into that, it was horrible, but they, they did, and they feel good. And I think I was talking to Diane over here, Diana, something. And you know, they, they were talking about, they had to clean up their act, she and her husband Ian, they, they were uh, trying to, they changed their diet, they went for good, more vegetables, I mean, all these things. And you know, it's hard, right? I mean, it's hard to get off this stuff. And there's sometimes there's a, a backlash, because your body's addicted to a lot of the junk that's in food, and, you know, and in all the drugs and everything else, and it takes a while to work out of your system, and you might suffer as a result. So the point is that symptom relief is not the answer either, and we want to treat the cause of the illness, okay? The problem is that conventional medicine is missing the point. We need to treat the cause. What the heck is the cause? Well, let's talk about what the real problem is. Going back to our ancestors, the Egyptians soon thereafter, the Ayurvedics, the Chinese, uh, we'll get to Hippocrates in a second. Uh, all the things I'm going to tell you, I, I wrote about in the first two books, but what really is the bottom line is, just to shortcut the thinking on this, is we have changed, particularly in this country, so rapidly since the beginning of the Industrialized Revolution that our, our environment's changed, the way we do things has changed, the stress has changed, the toxins are more. Uh, essentially, We've been removed from where our genes were created and, and toned up over time, like these primal tribes. And, uh, oh, you know, I can point. That's good. Too. So we have these drastic lifestyle and environmental changes, all about the Industrial Revolution. It's added up to a number of problems, including a lack of nutrients in the soil and food. You're eating food that looks like it's real and nutritious, but it's not. According to the Furman Bear Report, most food of today compared to 1936 is maybe 20 to 30 percent as nutritious as it used to be. Now, in, uh, I did radio shows that are on the website, uh, KPNC Radio. I got one of the heads of the, uh, I had people there you wouldn't believe that. You, know, you don't see on TV because they're not drug friendly, okay? <laughs> but the Department of the Agriculture, one of the heads, and she says, well, you know, well, foods are more nutritious. I go, really? I go, well, how can that be? I, I told her about this, you know, this Furman Bear report and this and that. She goes, oh, 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 no, no. We put the vitamins in. See, that's what we do. We enrich them. But we, it, it should be there in the first place. They, they know it's gone. They put a few in just to make it look good, right? Okay, not a good idea. So the other thing is the pollution. 400 toxins I came up with. Well, there's over 400 
Okay, man, that's not just mercury, PVC, I mean, just all this junk in there, out there. And I mean, how many medical doctors talk to you about this stuff? Oh, your cholesterol is high, let's put you on this drug. Oh, you got a headache. I, they're just guys in the service. I want to get in there, you know, and find out what's really beneath the surface. So, uh, going back to the tribes, when you look at these people, like the Huns in Soviet Georgia's, like Teddy Cockins, uh, uh, Iser Bajani, uh, some of the Afrikaners, the island people, uh, hey, there's no cancer, there's no diabetes, there's no, can you imagine societies that don't have these problems? I mean, and they're not doing anything fancy, right? They don't have chronic fatigue, digestive disorders, arthritis, and eat, all these things here. They don't need drugs or assisted living. Like a Hunzen will be 100 years old working in a field. Grandma and grandpa, everybody's out there. Okay? And um, I came up with a life expectancy. I averaged them out. I looked at all the blue zones. Blue zones, we call this beyond blue zones. Oh, oh. Here we go. Uh, because the blue zones are also good. They're kind of between uh, the tribes, the primal tribes, modern primitives, they call them, and us. They're better. So, like a blue zone might have 10 extra years of life. You hear about the blue zones and all that? These places where people have better health? No? Have you heard about them? Okay, there's kind of a place between, uh, you know, our most advanced civilization with a million choices, and then blue zones that are old-fashioned, old that are, have better health, but they're trying to get you to do whatever, you know, people do in the blue zone, which isn't smart either. Uh, but then there are the primal tribes. So, uh, where our life expectancy is 78.8 years, and blue zones are 85 something, but the tribes are 95 and better. I've got 110 for some, but I'm not sure it's real. I just tried to take, a, take the lower numbers so nobody gets mad. The most advanced country in the world. We have an epidemic of degenerative disease, cancer. I mean, look at all this stuff. Osteoporosis, right? Life expectancy, latest figure, 78.8 years. And that's with drug, drugs and things. I mean, that you know, maybe some people wouldn't go so far. And surgeries and things. We have technology that keep people. But what about the quality of life? I don't know how they can equate that, but they haven't. Here. So, history of a hidden science that will change the world. What I'm about to tell you has kind of been, for one reason or another, poo-pooed too much. Now it's coming into the, the mainstream it's more than ever. I've seen uh, a lot of changes take place. Uh, there's two books that talk about the politics and economics and psychology and, you know, really why we just don't have this at our fingertips. Unless you know somebody like me or, you know, which is, unfortunately, we're in a minority. <laughs> so. Two books, Innocent Casualties and Good Intentions, uh, talk about how, well, with this huge study I told you about that cost us a half a billion dollars, uh, they tried to bury the study. They tried to keep it off for front page news. Can you imagine saying we could get rid of 81% of all disease in the U.S. within 30 years if we institute this plan? Did you ever see that on the front page? Of course, that was in the early 70s. So I'm 62. I remember, you know, I've been around a while. So uh, those two books are really good. And again, you know, we have the economics, the politics, the marketing. There's, you know, it's all about the money machine anyway. So, I mean, a lot of that's, again, repeating what we said before because people make money off of our sickness. So, is that the point this is? So I broke the machine. Oh my God. We'll get it going. Uh -oh. I'll, I'll move it for you. Okay. So are you okay with the screen here? Or you want to yeah, unless we. Uh, just think. think well, I want to go, go back. You want to go back one, yeah? Back one. Okay. Okay. Yes. Is that back or forward? Yeah, that's back. That's, back. Right. that's it. Okay, let's go back. No, yeah, that's, that's right where it should be. Okay, yeah, we want to go to the, the father. Next one. One more? One more. There it is. Oh, okay. One no, more. No, no, no. Go the other way. Wrong way? Wrong way. 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 Wrong
they had ways of trying to actually personalize the environment to your needs. Uh, but really, putting the, the disease diet connection together in a most scientific manner, we uh, credit Hippocrates. Remember Hippocrates? He lived a long time ago. He considered, in fact, the Hippocratic Oath is this, no matter what any doctor tells you. In all disease, look to the spine first. Thy food shall be thy remedy. Treat the individual, not the disease, and physician, above all, do ye no harm. Three in the battery. Oh, it did. Oh, the pointer did. Okay. All right. So he had specific foods, we call them condition-specific foods now, to treat specific conditions. And he started to put this together. Uh, it obviously moved, that was 2500 BC. <coughs> and uh, moving ahead, actually, do you, do you know the, two, the story of the two James, James Lynn and James Cook figured out vitamin C, a lack of caused scurvy, you've heard of the Limeys in England. Well, they were the first ones that said, hey, you eat this food, you don't get scurvy. Hey, smart. That's when it really began. That's when we started to pay attention. Still kind of slow for a while. So they figured out the vitamin C deficiency. Now, Thomas Edison came along, and he said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine. We don't need these drugs. We don't. All we got to do is take care. And he, again, was playing off of Hippocrates, you know. He says, in all disease, look at the spine first, and that food should be, and that meant body concerns, exercise, all that kind of stuff. And diet and the cause and prevention of disease. Now, do you think we are doing that? I don't know. Okay. Okay, now the real godfather from a scientific standpoint of, of what we call biocorrective correction biology medicine. Do you remember Linus Pauling? Everybody remember him? Two Nobel Prizes? No? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I had the pleasure of meeting him at cancer control. And, uh, he is a, an amazing guy, but he says, you know, let's go back to figuring out how to put the right vitamins and, you know, take it, the aminos, the, all these things we're talking about. But he, he wrote a book called Orthomolecular Medicine. They coined the, the term orthomolecular medicine. It's now called functionally integrated orthomolecular medicine, uh, biocorrective medicine, sorry. Pretty, it's a mouthful. But so whole idea is to fix you with things that are in food and nature. That's it. But he was also big on, hey, we got to test you first. Don't discuss about this. Okay, because everybody's different, right? We're all biochemically unique. A guy by the name of Roger Williams in the 40s proved that. He did more research than anybody else, but I bet you never heard of him. You heard of Linus because he got the Nobel Prize. Right? Okay, now the godfather, Dr. Hoffer, uh, treating schizophrenia without drugs. The Amer I don't want to say this because it will be on YouTube, but this, let's say organized medicine in this country hated this guy because he didn't use drugs on schizophrenia. He was actually, uh, uh, he and Linus Pauling were buddies. He, by the way, was the longest standing editor-in-chief of the Journal of Orthomolecular Medicine. And just like all these guys that use nutrition over drugs, they all die in their 90s, by the way. They should live longer. But he ran himself down, I hate to say it. I remember talking to him that two weeks later he passed away. Because he's trying to do a world tour. He says, I'm going to die by the time I'm 166. But he ran himself down. He got a virus. He was in another country. Uh, pretty sad story. At any rate, he is the first, uh, he started our medical advisory board. He was the head of my medical advisory board. He mentored me. That's one of the reasons they call me America's leader in personal life nutrition. He, I have him on the radio program, we, we correspond. He says, you, you're one of the only guys that gets it. He says, I'm talking to all these people. I say, well, hey, I want to, just like with Dan, I want to learn what you know. <laughs> Help me. So we did. He was a great guy. I miss him. Now, talking about those, um, the study is that um, this uh, evaluation in nutrition, uh, the, you know, the an evaluation of, of uh, researching the United States on nutrition, I talk fast. Uh, the Department of Agriculture ran that study. I mentioned it before. It said that all disease, disease is diet related and the solution to illness can be found in nutrition. That simple. Now, they define nutrition as something different than you may. Okay? They define nutrition as testing what's in food before you eat it, which, by the way, is where ingredient lists came from. You see the ingredient lists on your food? It's one of the studies that backed that up. But then testing your body after you eat it to get the two to line up. So with that, I think you had a little bit too much calcium in your system, not enough potassium. So we want to take away foods that are real high in calcium and, and uh, low in potassium, and we want to give him foods that are the other way around until it balances out, and then we'll get in the middle and figure out his total long-term pattern for life. His genetic signature, as they said. These guys figured that 71. This thing should have been out there, you know, all over the place. Was it? No. 
So.